All right, we've moved on to our next step, which is going to be marking our body tube uh, and fin tube for the fins and the launch lugs. Uh, again, we took sandpaper and we knocked the shine off so that we get better adhesion from the glue on both tubes. Now, what it showed in the instructions is using the fin guide to mark the lower tube for the fins and the launch lug, and then later on assembling the two pieces and further drawing your line up for the launch lug. We're actually not going to do that that way. Uh, I'm going to take my angled aluminum. This is my angled aluminum. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a line. Since we're not putting any fins on it, I can just draw a line right up the tube. And there we go. We've got a nice line going all the way up the tube. So now I already have a mark for my launch lug. I just have to remember when I assemble the two pieces to make sure this launch lug line matches up with this launch lug line. It makes more sense to me that way. So that's how I'm actually going to do it. <clears throat> of course, you can do it whatever way works for you. That's just the way I'm going to do it. So let's take our scotch tape, pull off a little piece here, and we're going to tape it onto our marking guide. Again, we have scuffed this up, so now we know that uh, it's going to be easier to draw on it, and we're going to be able to see our markings. And paint's going to adhere to it, glue's going to adhere to it a lot better than if we hadn't. Okay, so now we've got it lined up, and I always like to do the launch lug first, so I'm going to do a single mark. If you're using a door frame or a ruler, go ahead and make two marks, one on both sides. I'm using my um, angled aluminum, so I don't really need to make both marks, but do something to make your lug, launch lug different. You can just put an L right next to it. Just draw a little L. You can put F by fins if you want. I really don't need to mark my fin marks because I am using the Estes fin alignment guide. But I'm going to go ahead and mark them anyways to just give me a, a good lineup for the launch lug and the fins together. Now we're going to carefully peel this tape off so that we can reuse this again if we need to. We just fold it over right like that. Make sure it's all pushed down. Now I've got an envelope that I stick this in along with um, my uh, template of a fin and the instructions so I have this all together for a later date if I ever have to do a rebuild of a section of the rocket, a total rebuild and I don't want to buy the kit, or if I even just uh, need to make a part, I can do it by pulling out the instructions. So now I've got my angle of alumina and I'm going to extend these lines the entire length of this tube. I go up and down a couple of times to make sure that it's nice and dark and I can see it really, really well. Now we go to our next one. I actually do have a piece of tape taped right across the angle of alumina. If I were doing multiple markings at different distances, let's say I had a, a cluster engine, I had to do different marks on each tube. They were all the same marks, but each tube had marks. I could do the marks on the tape like this and then do another mark here and then just grab each tape and that's what that block for. Grab each tube, put it up against block, and make my marks. But it's just another uh, technique I have for marking tubes up repeatedly, doing the same marks on different tubes. Okay, so we've got that. And last but not least, our launch lug. And since this is our launch lug, I'm actually going to go and make the line a little bit different on here. I'm not extending it all the way through on both ends. I'm only going to extend it on one end. So that will be my forward end or um, and the other end will be my aft end. That way I'm able to uh, differentiate between it and when it's time to assemble the rocket lower and uh, upper parts together I have the ability to line up my marks. But that'll make it different from the other so I know this is my launch lug and that's a fin because it goes all the way through. Alright so we've got that marked. Um, Next step would normally be to glue the fins on at this point in time, but we actually aren't going to glue the fins on because we have those underneath our books over here drying still. Uh, we're going to go look in the uh, instructions a little bit more, and we're going to get our fin alignment guide set up so that we can actually start doing our uh, fins here in just a few minutes. So we'll be back uh, in just a little bit.
moving right along in the build. Uh, while we're waiting for all these things to dry, we're going to go ahead and keep skipping around and work on things that we can work on while we're doing the build. So if, like today, it's Western Washington, uh, we're dealing with wind and rain, so I'm out in the shop killing time, bored out of my mind. So I'm going to skip around and trying to do things that I can do just to, to further the build along. One of the things I can do is I can take the nose cone. This is a cast nose cone, and it had a little bit of a lip on the bottom, and it had some... Uh, plastic uh, molding pieces that were sticking out. So I just took some sandpaper and I went around and I sanded it. Later on I'm actually going to sand the whole nose cone and scuff it up just a little bit. Again it's shiny so the paint's not going to grip as well. So if we scuff it up the uh, paint's going to take a lot better. We're going to check the bottom part here. We're going to see how well it fits. It's not visible to anything so I'm not worried about uh, making it look pretty. And we're going to probably use a uh, uh, plastic glue to assemble this or possibly an epoxy. But remember, if you use an epoxy on plastic, you might want to drop it in water or something to keep it cool while it uh, cures because epoxy does cause heat as it cures. Now we've got our coupling ring. The coupling ring, we want to make sure when we set it into our two pieces that it is halfway between the two pieces. So we're going to do a couple of things before we put it in one. We're going to fit it. And this is the top part of our, oh, excuse me, go the other way around, that's the bottom. So I'm going to write top on my fin tube, and then I'm going to go over here to my other tube, and I'm going to write bottom. It really doesn't matter on this tube, so we'll do that later. But uh, what we're doing is we're going to slide in our retainer, or our coupler, and it slides in freely, so we don't have to do any modification to the inside of the tube. But I've got a little bit of uh, damage here to the outside from sanding earlier. So I'm just going to lightly, at an angle, sand around the edge. And what this is going to do is it's going to take off that burr that's on there. If I had a problem fitting it, I would stick sandpaper inside and sand the inside and take any burr from the inside off so that this would fit better. And by giving it a slight angle, I'm also giving my wood putty that I'll be using later to fill the spirals and the seam somewhere to go. So I'm not worried about doing a little bit of a depression when I'm sanding. I'm more worried about making sure that things are going to fit properly and I get all this fuzz and hair off the tube. Okay, so that fits in there pretty good. So what's the next thing we have to worry about? Well, the next thing is we want to make sure when we put this in, we put it in halfway. So we're going to go ahead and measure it. We're going to take and we're going to measure it. And we're going to mark the halfway point. Okay, so now we've got a halfway point marked. We need to make that circle go all the way around. This is how I know I've inserted my ring straight, true, and all the way around. It's in... So we're going to take and transfer that mark. Remember I told you I had the tape on the angle. We're going to transfer that mark right there. Now here's where that stop block comes in handy. We're going to take our pencil, we're going to put it on the mark I just made, which is the halfway point, and we're just going to turn, while pushing against the stop block down here, we're going to turn our ring. We'll go all the way around. There's our marks. We've come all the way around. So now I have a mark going all the way around my coupler. And I'll know when I insert it into the tube, I'll insert it right up to that mark. One thing I'm going to tell you now, and you'll hear me when I actually do glue the two pieces together, is use a lot of glue. Go ahead and slather that glue in there really, really good. The more glue you use, the more lubrication it applies to this, so it'll slide in. If you put in a thin layer of glue and you start trying to push this in, it's going to grab instantly, and you're going to be stuck halfway in, and you're not going to be able to get all the way in. So use a lot of glue. Don't be scared, because it will dry, and put it in there. And again, when you're letting it dry, let it dry upside down or right side up. Let it dry one particular way where you don't care which way the glue runs 
because it's not going to run into anything. In the case of this, it'll be um, I'm going to actually reach inside and wipe out the excess glue with my finger, and it'll dry like this on a piece of paper. Because if there's a little bit of glue in here, it's not going to matter. Uh, if it runs down to the engine mount, I won't be able to actually mount this straight up and down, and that would be difficult to do. So, again, uh, we're going to go over how to do that when we get to that part in the step. So, we've knocked off a couple more steps. We'll finish sanding this down so it's all scuffed up. We've got our dry fit done for our body tube. We've got our dry fit done for our uh, nose cone cap. And that's basically all you do while you're waiting for one step to dry or finish. Go ahead and go through other steps and see what other steps you can do or prepare to do in the the idea of it. now once I start going I can go a little bit quicker because all these different parts are dried I assemble all these parts together boom we're done so we're gonna move on to that all right we're moving on to our next step the tip the uh, CA glue or super glue is dried in the uh, nozzle area where the engine would be so I'm gonna take the sandpaper I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna sand any roughness out until it fits it's nice and smooth and I'm going to dry fit it with an expended engine. I generally keep a couple of expended engines around just so I can do this sort of stuff and I'm going to make sure that I can slide that engine in there and it's not too tight of a fit. It's not going to be hard getting it in and out. So that works out pretty good. Feels nice. So now I know that I can do that with the motors. I can get a motor in and out of there without too much hassle. And that's stiffened that up quite a bit from what it was. So now we're going to mount it into our lower assembly tube. We're going to dry fit it. That's a little tight. So we're going to turn around and we're going to sand it. And I've actually sanded it quite a bit already. I've been dry fitting it and trying and dry fitting and trying. So we're going to keep dry fitting and sanding until it fits the way we like. It slides in there pretty decently. Now if you're going to use uh, wood glue again, a white glue or wood glue, you're going to want to slide it put a lot of glue in there and slide this in quickly. If you don't, it will seize up and you won't get it all the way in and the instructions call for it to be flush with the bottom. We don't want to get, get stuck halfway out or something like that. That would be very bad. I'm actually going to be using epoxy, some five minute epoxy. and I'm going for a fairly strong bond here. Now the way I'm going to have to do this is I'm going to have to put the epoxy in then I'm going to have to slide the first part in just a little bit, then I'm going to have to dab in some more epoxy around the edge, and then slide the, the rest of the way in. That's why I'm using the epoxy, because I'm going to slide it in in two steps, and it, to me it's a stronger bond with the epoxy, and it gives me the working time to slide this in with it, without it grabbing so quickly. So, first thing I'm going to do, is we're going to measure two inches, we're going to double check our instructions, and we're going to measure up the distance that we're going to have that forward mount is going to be how far up in the tube. And this is two and a half inches. So we're going to measure our popsicle stick two and a half inches. So we've got two and a half right there. Let's take our popsicle stick and let's measure two and a half inches. So now when I go to throw my uh, glue in, I know that I need to go in until that stick is showing the mark almost covered. That way I know I've gone in to the proper mark and then I can smear the glue around and that just gives me an eyeball look so I know I'm far enough in. So when I slide this in, as you can tell, the, it's a little bit different of a gap between the mark and the ring. But that ring is going to push the epoxy up with it and it's going to create its own little uh, fillet and good bond up there. And of course I've got the space so I can still move it in and I'm going to have to use the stick to get the glue on to the tube here slide it the rest of the way in. So let's go ahead and mix up our epoxy. And <clears throat> about time to buy some new epoxy here. It's getting very low. Harden her to catch up. 
There it is. And equal amounts. I'm not worried if I put in a little bit more than I need. But I'd rather do that than not have enough and have to try and mix up another batch while this stuff is sitting up. Okay, so now we mix. Remember, this stuff does get hot while it's curing, so don't leave your, your cup of excess laying around somewhere where it's going to heat up and cause problems. Uh, I've got a little trash can here that's metal that I throw this in. Sometimes I'll just leave it up on the counter on a piece of metal uh, where I know it's not going to cause any damage to anything. Again, we want to thoroughly mix our epoxy. I'm squishing the stick up against the side of the cup with my finger pushing in on the cup so I get any hardener and uh, resin off of it and mixed up well. Okay, that's about good. So let's go ahead and get a blob on my stick. And we're going to twirl it and stick her in there. We're up to the mark. And we're going to smear. And smear. Get another blob. And twirl it. In we go. We're up to the mark and we're smearing the glue around. Again, I'm not worried about using a little bit too much because I'd rather have too much. Uh, holding this in and not enough and have an accident with the uh, rocket failing. Okay, so we're going to slide in just a little bit. Now comes the fun part. This is where you really get your dexterity going. Getting your epoxy on the inside, not the outside. And again, always have plenty of towels nearby to wipe up as you go along. Okay, now we're going to slide this up until it's flush, and it slides really, really easy. And another way you can make sure your slid flush is use your pencil or some other device. And now we know we're flush, so we're going to take our rag, and we're going to wipe all the way around to make sure we've got our excess off. Okay, so now while this is hardening, I want it to sit up and down, so I've got a piece of paper. I'm going to put it up here on my books, and I'm going to set this so it's right side up, or you can set it with an engine in it or something to keep it flat and level. I've got a ledge up here I can put it on, but we're going to set that up, and we're going to let that sit and harden, but remember to put something underneath it so that it doesn't accidentally bond to your countertop or wherever you have it sitting. So I've got that braced up to, to dry now, and once it's dry, I can turn around, and that epoxy is actually making, you can't see it, but I can see a nice shiny bead all the way around the top of that thrust ring. So that's going to keep that there, and then I'm going to do the same thing on this back ring. When I'm done, I'm going to squeeze epoxy into this hole and let it sit, sit down while it's sitting right side up, and that's going to give me a good retention on that part of it there. So we're going to let that harden up and dry, and then we'll be putting on the the back piece, uh, again, we have a little extra here. We're going to put on the, the epoxy ring in the back side, and then we'll uh, let that dry up. And it takes about 5-10 minutes to dry, of course. And after that, we can start mounting our fins.